All right, welcome back to another episode of GPPD Podcast. I'm your host, KD Witt. Whitney. All right, um, before we get started, do I say house rules? Not really house rules, just some things we need to talk about. Things we need to address. All right, um, so September the 14th, we have a testing uh, for GPPD. Uh, so get online, it's grandprairiepolice.org. I always have to remember that. Um, I'll put the wrong email or website out there and have people going somewhere else. Dot com. Yeah. No. Terrible. Uh, no, it's dot org. Huh. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, September 14th, fill out the personal history statement. I know, I know. It's like 83 pages long. Yeah. Start now. You'll be finished by the time the 14th rolls around. Um, all right. Other than that, I think that's it. Now, we do have like other seasonal jobs. Y'all get online. Check it out. It's a whole bunch more than I could. Uh, tell you more than I can remember yeah um but all right so without further ado this is gonna be good because I see him all the time I speak to him but the the schedule work schedule is different so uh oh. sergeant Thomas uh glad to have you I'm glad to be here hey we got leadership here let's go <laughs> I know right so yeah. no rules sir no rules okay. so all right um you know, before we get started, so I, I know there's a ton of questions I have about that, but we're going to wait. So, uh, Thomas, before we get into that, tell me about, like, man, growing up, how would you get started, so to speak? So I was never one that was like, ever since I was a kid, I want to be a police officer. Never Thank thought you. about it. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, those, I'm used to that. Yeah. Like, oh, when I was you. a child, you know, there's yeah. someone. No. Yeah. The only time where I even thought about being a police officer is I was in a Christmas play, and I was five, <laughs> and I played a police officer directing traffic for Frosty the Snowman. Wow. And that was the last time I thought about it until I was 22. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Directing traffic. Yep. Which I will never do now, because mm. there's no way I'm going to go stand in the heat and direct traffic. Oh. Yeah. No. I don't recommend that for anybody. So, no. So, um, I was born in Irving. I grew up in Irving for a little bit, and then I moved to Louisville. Yeah. Uh, after I lived in Louisville for a little bit, moved to Bedford. After I moved, uh, graduated high school, I went to LD Bell. All right. And then I went to college in Waxahachie. So, I am local. And then I moved, then I got married, moved to Euless. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Talk about homegrown. Yeah. Very much so. That's awesome. So, uh, LD Bell, what, the Raiders? Mm -hmm. no? Yeah. Blue Raiders. Blue Raiders. Mm. Okay. I remember that. Did y'all have like a great track team at some point? Probably a lot of years. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of my best friends, he was a, uh, he ranked in state for hurdles for the 110 and 300. Yeah. Yeah. So, even though I was in the country growing up, we knew about LD Bell. The track team was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I thought the football team was decent back then. It we were was, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the we'd always hear in track it was man the LD Bell LD Bell, and I was like, who the hell is that? You know, yeah. where is that? So that's cool. And then college in Waxahachie. What's in Waxahachie? There are some things. There's a lot of police officers in Waxahachie now. Well, no, no, you said college. Yeah, so I went to Southwestern. It was a private school. Oh, Sag you. Yep. You know they're gonna change their name. Yeah, changing it to. Something is it like East? Is it East? No, it's not Easton. They're changing it's it to easy. one of their founders or something yeah, like that. So they're changing name. the name of the school. Marketing. So, yes. So Sagu, not Swagu? No. Sagu. S A G U. And was that Southwestern Assembly of God? Assemblies of God University. Mm -hmm. I thought we played. Uh, I went to McMurray. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we scrimmaged we, all before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We drove out there and played. Yeah. At the new stadium. It was like, I think the first year it was open. Okay. So, well, then back then it was called Southwestern, I guess, S W A G U. No, no it was still mm -hmm. S A G U. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I was just Maybe you're just thinking swag. I was just saying you could just be thinking of that <laughs> word right now. I don't know. I'm going to put that one on me. Hey. I was just saying it wrong. <laughs> Dang, all these years. Okay, Sagu. But yeah, we went out to, we played McMurray in August. Yeah. I think it was my freshman year. And it was so hot. Mm -hmm. My cleats were just melting to the turf. It was so bad. I had new cleats to start the season, and then I had to go get new cleats right after the scrimmage. It was it was that hot. Yeah. Bro, you know, I used to tell people, Abilene heat is so different mm -hmm. than the rest of it. So, of course, growing up in co uh, playing in college in Abilene, we went to East Texas Baptist. Did y'all play them? We didn't play them. Okay. And it was just when they were starting out, we sent six people to the emergency room after the game, and oh. I was one of them. Man. Yep, cramps. I mean, 
and not to be too graphic, but you peeing blood, uh, it was dark mm-hmm. orange juice. And the doctor goes, man, I haven't seen this in, I don't know, he said 30-something years he had been been a doctor, but dehydrated. Yeah. So it's just a big difference between playing in the east and mm-hmm. then you, you go out west and it's just dry heat. It's 106. You're not really sweating yet. The first five minutes, you're like, what is going on? It's just hot. Yeah, we would drive out and we would play uh, Sol Ross University oh. out in Alpine. Oh. And that was that was rough. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. rough. Because the trip itself. Yeah. Like, tell people, because a lot of people don't know – when you say Sol Ross, I automatically think you're just out in the mountains, and then you pop up on this little town, yep. and there's a football stadium and a college up in the what? mountains. Very nice college. Very nice. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Man. And it's just, you look around, and it's just flat desert everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just the school. Just the school. Just the school. That's and it. I, I think we counted back then it was one stoplight in a subway. Oh, probably. Yeah. But we would, we'd also, we'd go up to Kansas and play smaller schools. Mm-hmm. And it's like where we would eat pregame meal, we'd go to a bowling alley. And so we would eat at the restaurant in the bowling alley before the game. See. That's funny though. So small. my husband went to us. He went to Bethany College in Kansas. Yeah, that's in Kansas. So, yeah. Yeah, and he yeah, we would drive up there. We'd play them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we play oh, Bethany. Yeah. Small yeah. world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They recruited me. You know? Oh, wow. I that's told cool. them no because I didn't want to play in the snow. <laughs> 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 I was like, too cold up there. I ain't going up there. It's just flat wind. Kansas is. Yeah. It's just. There's nothing to yeah. break the wind, and it'll get up to, like, 20, 30 miles an hour, and you're just, like, getting knocked over by it. Yeah. So you were a football player. I did. What position? So uh, whenever I went to college, I got recruited as a nose tackle. Okay. Uh, in high school, I played nose tackle, and uh, I played offensive guard. Okay. So then whenever I got to college, I started the first six or seven games at nose tackle. Yeah. And then I got moved for the rest of the season to offensive guard. And my sophomore year, I got moved to defensive end. <laughs> so I started there, then I got moved to offensive guard again, and then my junior and senior year, I was like, I'm going to get moved either way, so I'm just going to play offense. Man. So I just play, I finished out my career uh, offensive guard. Man, small world. That's, That's awesome. a lot of movement. That's yeah. cool, though. Yep. So y'all played a lot of the same teams that we did, then it was like, uh, who was up in Sherman? Uh, Austin College. Yep. Did y'all, you played them? The Kangaroos. Yeah. Because every time they get a first down, you'd hear that annoying, first and ten, ruse. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Talk about small world. That is. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, so y'all moved around a lot uh, growing up. And what was the reason you said? Uh, so we actually – so whenever I was first born, we lived in Irving, mm-hmm. and we lived with my grandparents. And okay. then after that, we moved into a apartment complex in Irving. And if you're driving on 161 now, north of 183, okay, there's an industrial, like uh, – trucking area with like uh and, and construction equipment okay so like big yellow trucks and all that stuff that's where our apartment complex was and it got bought out for 161 to be created yeah so they bulldozed it <sighs> built the highway yeah. so then from there we moved, we moved to Louisville, and uh we lived in a trailer park there mm-hmm. and then my parents split and we went to uh bedford and that's where i finished out junior high and high school yeah yeah h-e-b area is real cool yeah it's uh, you talking about a melting pot. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a bunch of different, a little bit of everybody over there. Yeah, a lot of apartment complexes. Yeah. A lot of apartment complexes, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. So, at what point do you meet your wife and, you know, start thinking, man, babe, we may want to lean towards law enforcement? Mm. So, I met my wife whenever I was 17. Uh, my wife was 15. Hmm. She was in the same grade as I was. So we met. So okay, she, wait, wait, wait. Well, yes. Hold up. I'm, hold trying up. To do, look, I'm trying to do the wait. math over here. Yeah, so I married someone extremely smart. I was going to say, she, okay. yeah, she yeah. was just advancing. Yeah. Yeah. She's smart. So she skipped two grades. Uh, Man. She was a senior the same time I was a senior. So she lived in uh, Duncanville, yeah. Duncanville, Dallas, borderline. So mm-hmm. she lived pretty much right down the street from Redbird Mall. Okay. What? Yeah. Nice. So I would drive. Redbird? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So I would drive over there, and one of our first dates was we went to Redbird Mall, and we were walking around Redbird Mall. Let me tell you, I grew up going to Redbird. Oh, I'm from Oak Cliff, okay, <laughs> so not Oak Cliff, Oak Cliff. And <laughs> going to Red Ball, Redbird Mall was like a really special thing. It was great during that. I mean, but things change. It's yeah. not the same, yeah. but it was a really awesome mall back in the day. So, yeah, we would go over there. We'd hang out over there. Yeah. Uh, she was right off of the... Uh, the Camp Wisdom Cocker Hill exit mm-hmm. in 20. She mm-hmm. was just north of that by probably about a mile and a half. Yeah. But it's like you would turn down this dirt road, and then you would drive down to her parents' house, and they had 
like six acres, like in the middle of the borderline. Yeah. yeah. And you're just sitting there and you're like, there's trees everywhere. There was mm-hmm. a creek that ran behind their property. It was like you would have never expected it there. Huh. It's a lot of places like that, though, in Duncanville and even some back parts of DeSoto, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I met her whenever I was 17. She was 15. Uh, going into my senior year of high school. And we've been together ever since. Yeah. So. Did, wow. did you have to defend that, though? It's like, hey, tell me who, <laughs> this is my girlfriend. Wait, no, no, no. She looking young. Bro, we're in the same grade. <laughs> we're in the same grade. No, 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 no. Right. I'm calling somebody on you. <laughs> no, I mean, it my sister knew her, so that's the only reason why I met her. Oh, my okay. sister was like, hey, she was like, you need to come to my church. There's this girl here I want you to meet. And I was like, man, I don't want to drive 30 minutes to meet a girl. <laughs> and then it was like, a, it, like I know people say that's whatever. That's back when gas was a dollar and 50 <laughs> no, cent, yeah, bro. You should have been like, okay. No, right. gas back then was actually like a dollar <laughs> ten. <laughs> okay. okay. Like, I'm driving over there. <laughs> so so I drive over there, and uh, first time I saw her, I was just like, okay, worth a drive. And ever since then, it just took off. Yeah. That's so sweet. Oh, I like that. I never even said anything to her. The first thing I ever did is I went up and I just kind of pulled on her ponytail. And that was the first thing that I ever did. And you didn't get slapped, punched, tail, cussed out. Water really? in your face. No. Nothing. She turned around, she saw this good looking man. Oh, and she said that's what it was. She said, This is the most attractive man I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> we we okay. will go with that. I like All that. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what she said. I like that. Yeah. And that was in two thousand and three. All right. So how long y'all been married? So we've been married just hit sixteen years. That's freaking mm. awesome. Yeah. So sixteen years we've been married because our anniversary, 16 years now, and then I'll hit 16 years total law enforcement in the fall. Dang. So she married me, and I had no idea that I was actually going to be a police officer. Whoa. I was moving furniture in the summertime. I'm t- we have so much in <laughs> <It's> common. <laughs> I'm Did you find Yes, you while I was in college, Stop it was playing. like, that was my, so- I would come come home, work out in the summer, and then, you know, we move furniture. Yeah. Yep, Murphy Brothers moving. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So, That's so funny. whenever I was in college, I was working at Walmart, and I was changing oil. And then I was like, man, I was like, I need more money than this because I'm about to get married. And so I went, and I knew a buddy who was working for a moving company in Fort Worth. Yeah. And so he was like, hey, I can get you a job. And so I just started moving furniture, and it was cash every week. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to worry about anything mm-hmm. until taxes rolled around. And then it was, hey, you need something else because you're getting married. Yeah. I need insurance and benefits. <laughs> and so that's whenever I started thinking yes. like, oh, Grown I need man. I need something else now. And so it was, I looked online and as a whim, the city that I grew up in, they were hiring. And so I just applied on a whim and yeah. went out and tested and it just went from there. Whoa. So how was the testing process for you? So that one... On my initial was you did the Cooper PT test. Okay, I remember that. And then after that, it was you do a online, like almost kind of like a written assignment. Yeah. Um, you'd go in and just do an online test. Okay. And then after that, it was psych, poly, yeah. and then oral board. Mm-hmm. Dang. And so Miss Thomas was like, yeah, babe, or was she one of those, wait, 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 you want to go into what? Law right. enforcement, let's talk about this. It was one of those... Even before I came here, like we we always talk about everything. So yeah. it's one of those, hey, this is this is the opportunity that I can have, which is financial security. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the downfall. Yeah, scheduling whatever. And it was the same thing coming over here. It was we had long conversation before even tested of if I get hired, I'm going to be at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. I'm going to be stuck on nights for a while. Now we got two kids in the mix. Yeah, and so it's just one of those like that was a very long conversation. But mm-hmm. after laying it out, it was yeah, I support you on it. So. It's good that you did that, though, because, like, you're involving her. She's a part of this, not just yeah. something you do separately yeah. from mm-hmm. her. So I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even in the beginning, whenever she was like, I don't know. And it was like, okay, well, if you don't want me to do it or if I get – it was always – the first time I applied, it was if I get told no, now I'm just going to walk away. Like, because I never thought about doing this job anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, if I get told no, oh, whatever, I'll go do something else. And then I got told yes, and I went to the academy, and that was a beating. Because uh, we went to COG. Oh, oh, you're talking about the academy the first school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah so yeah. the initial basic academy, I went to COG, yeah. and that was... Uh, that's where I met Chief Abudo. Mm-hmm. We went to the academy together. Um, so, yes, he was just as tall then as he is now. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's shrunk an inch. <laughs> Jeez, okay, that's cool. So, yeah, went through that process. That was fun. Um, 
I might have a copy of a DVD of him getting tased and OC sprayed. Whoa. Uh, so yeah, that's going to surface. If, we just, I if mean, that I leaks somehow, yeah. Yeah. it might leak. So That's funny. So what would you say the main difference between the COG Academy? Because mm-hmm. you had to go back through hours. I did, yeah. We did the 10-week Lateral yeah. Academy here. Yeah, how was it? What's the difference? Uh, the Lateral Academy here is different just because you kind of already know everything as far as like the laws and everything. Yeah. yeah. And plus coming with all the experience, I knew I wasn't going to get tested on certain areas uh, as far as like knowing penal code or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but whenever I was at COG, it was, if you failed three tests, they kick you out and then you'd get fired from your agency. Well, I failed two of the first three tests. Oh, wow. And so that was in like within the first five weeks of the Academy. And it was, Hey, you've got like 20 something weeks to go. You can't fail anymore. Man. But I was also finishing up my last semester of online college at the same time. So I was doing Jump. my essays at the same time I was studying. Mm. That's a lot. That yeah. is a lot. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was that was rough, stressful time. Um, man. You failed three total. You're done. Mm-hmm. And then they let your agency know, which then the agency goes, okay, well, yeah, you're terminated yeah. over here too. Yeah, so if you fail the third one that they do is they pull you out of the room and they're like, hey, by the way, you failed your third test. So we're going to call your agency and tell them that you're kicked out of the academy. What? And then your agency will call you and be like, hey, you need to come up here and have an admin meeting. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, you failed. You're done. Yeah. Man. So, but it's different because where I was at before, it was uh, at will employee. So it wasn't like civil service. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So it was like, you're done. You're done. Mm-hmm. Or they could even walk up to you at any time and be like, hey, you're done. You're done. Yeah. No, no, like trying to counsel and try to work some things out. Mm-hmm. Let's tell you the information and how we can work no just bye but after you finish school then the the cog academy was it like a breeze you just flew through it or uh yeah i mean it was still it was mainly just stressful like internal stress because it was i'm thinking man if i fail this test like i'm done Mm -hmm. yeah and i i had more time now to focus on being in the basic academy but it was still like that much more stress like studying Mm -hmm. and then as soon as i was trying to take a break mentally or do something or like play video games or something my wife would be like hey um you know you've already failed two tests right and if you fail a third one you're going to lose your job right i was like okay yep yeah. i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go back i'm gonna Look, go back thank you for adding stress <laughs> yeah. i was trying yeah. to relax so yeah man so and I'm, I'm also a lateral so where i came from they were like if you fail two it was two mm-hmm. tests mm-hmm. you'd be done and so you want to add stress oh yeah Fail that first one. Mm. And when they pull you in, it's like, come on, man, you got to restudy. Because the class don't stop. Right. And it's like, so next Friday you got another test. Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to study over the weekend because you test on Fridays. Well, then that Monday is your retest. Mm-hmm. So where we could use the weekend to already start preparing for next Friday, man, you can see it on some of those guys' face. Oh, they just, they, they studied all weekend. Well, and being at like the regional academy, every agency has their own standards. So there was... A guy who sat next to me, and he was with, I think, Richardson. And it was, they had a GPA average. So he had to maintain an 85 average in order to stay in there. Well, he slipped under that, and they fired him while he was in the, he hadn't even failed a test. He was just under the average. Really? Yes. Uh, (laughs) I'm not going to say what I want to (laughs) say. If you don't want an officer that's going to make an 84, yeah. So. Yeah, it was, he was a great guy too. Yeah, I bet. I bet so. I, I bet he went to another department yeah, and probably is did. probably doing just yeah, fine. Probably. Yeah. Man, it's what if you have test anxiety? Like, oh, I do big time. Yeah, just, like I'm telling you. you I, know? Then I, don't take don't take the sergeant Sam because yeah. that is. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I'm not. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not because I I know I'm just one of those. I have to study twice as hard to mm-hmm. get the 75. Yeah. Mm. I, I, you can read that book once and you're going to highlight, take your notes. I've got to read it twice. Highlight, take notes, and write flash that. Flashcards. Yeah, book. yeah, I got flashcards. Yeah. I got to write that book over. Ugh, that's yeah. crazy. All right, so how many kiddos? You said two? I got two. I got seven and a five-year-old. Mm. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. So when you said, oh, honey, I'm going to take the test, but by the way, if I promote, I'm going to go tonight, <laughs> and you're going to be... Yeah, so I was just at the point where I could bid days, oh. and it was, oh. yeah. Well, me and my wife, we'd had a conversation. I had put in for something. I didn't get it, and I told her, I said, I don't want to, one, I didn't want to be a lateral who comes over 
and immediately thinks like, oh, I deserve this mm-hmm. or I deserve that mm-hmm. because of experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that I, w- I wanted to come here and I wanted to earn my right and I wanted to earn my keep and make like a reputation for myself. Yeah. And so I got told no on something. I just told my wife, I said, I'm not going to run around and I'm not going to act like a chicken with my head cut off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, here are the two things that I want. And it was like a month later, one of them opened up and I was like, I'm putting in for it. Yeah. And so then I studied for the next five months and that was God awful. Missed a lot of, uh, missed a lot of family time mm-hmm. studying so much. And it was like every day on your day off, it's like eight or nine hours reading, taking practice tests, just going over stuff, having her quiz me. It was, mm-hmm. it was brutal. Yeah. I always hear the whole family is involved in that process. Yeah. Well, I made it. Yeah, they were involved to the point of my wife, my kids would come in and they'd try to play with me. And she'd be like, hey, daddy's studying. Daddy's mm-hmm. studying for his test. Like, we gotta, we're going to go do this. We're going to go to the water park. We're going to go to the zoo. And it's like, man, I want to go to the zoo. Oh. <laughs> I want to go to the water park. <laughs> and then she's going to remind Yeah, I know. Let's see some pictures. Because I, cause I know you're going to lunch afterwards. And that means that i got to stay here and eat something. So mm. well, That's cool. So. Yeah. Do they do the kids understand what you what, what the ages one more time? Seven and five. So the seven year old probably lo- understand. Okay, daddy's a police officer. He's yeah, a sergeant. They they both pretty much know. Uh, I mean, by the time that they were born, I was on day shift where I worked at before, so I yeah. was home. On my days off, I would keep them. Mm. Yeah. And even if it's like we paid for daycare, I was like, hey, my days off, I'm going to keep you because like yeah. we're going to hang out. Yeah. But they've always had a good concept of. Hey, I have to go to work. This is what I do. So it's not like, it's not like you hear sometimes where people tell their kids, "Hey, I got to go to work," and they just break down. Mm-hmm. Like my kids are like, "Okay, mm-hmm. well, go rest, bad guys. Go have fun." <laughs> and my yeah. my daughter, whenever I come home, she'll come out of bed and she'll give me a hug, and her hair's all sticking everywhere, <laughs> and she's like, "Dad, how many bad guys you get?" And I'm like, "Wow, we only got a couple of bad guys last night." Oh, okay. And now I got them watching cops every once in a while. Of course. So now my kids are like, <laughs> we'll be funny. sitting at a, at a traffic light and my son will look over and he'll be like, hey, dad, that guy's a bad guy. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean he's a bad guy? Dad, he smokes. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because everyone on cops that we see that gets arrested is always smoking cigarettes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I like that. See, they're able to understand that. When my husband was in the military, our oldest, he's eight now, but he would understand like, hey, dad is serving in the military because then he got National Guard, so he would have to go back and forth sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when you communicate, they typically will understand. Yeah. Yeah. So just making sure that whenever I tell them I'm going to do something, that I do it. Because mm-hmm. yeah. as soon as I don't. Oh, oh they remember. Yeah. And they're going to remind you, too. You said. Yep. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I always tell guys, especially uh, our girls coming into this profession, like you said, you're going to miss so much mm-hmm. of the kiddos, the Family time, mm-hmm. I can't even, man, I can't tell you how much time I miss. And it's a lot, you know, it's, oh, I have a birthday. Well, we got this at work, and, mm-hmm. you know, we're short staff. Yep. Or what is it, minimum <laughs> staff? And you're like, oh, if I hear that word again, I'm going to scream. Yeah. Yeah. But it's true, you know. And then some of the days off were just, it was cattywampus. It of really course. was. So <laughs> of course. Where I came from, like, you could be on, bro, you'd be on, like, 13 years and you just made it to Wednesday Thursday off oh. and I'm like uh, <laughs> excuse me so when I when I I was applying over here in the at the time it was Steve died he was like hey your family is not more important than this person mm. everybody in patrol gets a Saturday off every mm. other Saturday and I was like this I was like okay now nah, he's lying he's just trying to get us <laughs> over here uh-huh. and then you ask the officer he's like no 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 the way our uh, work schedules are set up there's an A side B side everybody gets a Saturday and I was like how because mm. yeah. I was just so programmed. No, you don't see Saturday until 19 years on. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Where I was at, the swing day was Wednesday. Yeah. So you would do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then every other Wednesday. Mm. So you had to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. Every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every Thursday, Friday, oh, Saturday. Oh, no. See, cause that's when oh, you're able to afford the things you do with family. So mm-hmm. but, how do you really reconcile that? Like, did you have to get to a point where you started – I don't know if you ever experienced that, but like certain boundaries you had to be clear on. Did you, were you always, you knew how you're going to do it based on your communication with your wife? Did you kind of learn along the way? We have it to where it's a, that like Christmas day is Christmas day Mm. and everything else can kind of be moved around Mm. except for like major holidays, like Christmas and Thanksgiving and stuff like that. Like those are, you can't redo those. Like Mm. those go on that day. Um, Everything else like birthdays, like yes, your birthday's on this day. 
but we're going to do your party on a day that I'm off. Mm-hmm. So it's always being and telling the kids that too, just being like, hey, you know, we're going to do your party on this day. Oh, well, why aren't we doing it on my birthday? Well, most of the time because their birthday falls in the middle of the week, mm-hmm. and you yeah. get to say, yeah. well, you can't have any friends over it Wednesday at mm-hmm. 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, my kids are both Dude. in academy soccer, and so it's like that eats up a ton of time. Mm. So it's like, well, why can't we do it this day? Well, because you have soccer on um, Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Friday if you do <laughs> skills training. Then on the weekends, we're driving out to Frisco, and we're going to be doing a double header, if not a triple header, on Fridays or on mm. Saturdays. And then if we're in tournaments, it's Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah, just being able to tell them, like, hey, we're doing this here because this is the day where everyone can come. Yeah. But, yeah. And do you think that your kids, uh, I don't know the words, I'm going to say what the youngsters say, flex on other kids, like, my dad is a police officer. I know. <laughs> yeah, show up, dad. I, I had to tell my kid, don't do that. Please I, come to my school yeah, in there you uniform. Go. Just I, don't, like, I don't think they do. Yeah. I think they might every once in a while, but it's not something that, like, they brag about. The yeah. only thing they like doing is they like coming in my room and getting all my challenge coins out. <laughs> and then they walk around and they're like, they're like trading them within each other. Like, I'm like what do you, just go put them back. Yeah. yeah, go put them up. Yeah. But it's like every once in a while, something like one will disappear and then I'll find it in a school backpack. So I'm sure it's like, oh, hey, look what I got out of my dad's right. drawer. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> look, if that's the only thing they're taking from the house, we're good. Yeah, right? that's nice. That's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, kudos. We're winning. But no, there's a, there's a couple other kids that their parents are also like, either first responders, like police or fire, mm-hmm. and their dads, like, they'll come up and be like, oh, yeah, oh, I work for, you know, Fort Worth, or I do this for this city, or I mm-hmm. work in Hearst, or, you know, and they're like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I work in Grand Prairie. I always just play it off. Yeah. Every time someone asks me, oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I work for the city of Grand Prairie. Oh, and then sometimes they stop because they're like, you can tell that they don't really want to continue the conversation, mm-hmm. and then sometimes they'll be like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a police officer, and then I, I kind of always leave it mm-hmm. short and sweet. Yeah. And then it's like the more it's like if you want to know, like I'll tell you, but I'm not just going to get up there and be like, oh, well, since you asked a basic question, I'm going to give you a 30 minute dissertation as yeah. to, yeah. oh, this is what I do. So yeah. no, I like that answer. I would yeah. say I just I work for the city yeah. and then yeah. I just walk off. <laughs> yeah, I work. Yeah, I work for the city of Grand Prairie. Yeah. And they just kind of look at me. Oh, OK. How long you been there? Uh, I've been there a whole uh, four years and 10 days. So. <laughs> so the previous agency that you worked at um does it fall under tmrs do you yes. get your time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so That's i brought awesome. uh 11 and a half years with me already Damn. oh yeah. wow so you can retire in i can retire in f- four years and four months but who's mm. counting who's counting oh, i'm not going to months. i'm not going to yeah. no no, no way to be too little be too little. Yeah. I'm gonna have too much stuff. I'm gonna want to do. Mm-hmm. Once I retire, I'm not putting on another uniform. See, that's I'm, what. I'm, what? You're not coming back? No, no. Once I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. I'm gonna go find some mundane job. Yeah. I'm gonna go work at like Kroger or Bucky's, and I'm just gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna stock the shelves. Right. Don't ask me any questions. <laughs> Don't tell me anything. Just, uh, just leave me alone. Beef jerky on the house. <laughs> right. is missing. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> As Bucky's is awesome though. I'll Bucky's go. I will everything. go stock. I will do something just to get just to keep my heart going. Just yeah. to keep my feet moving. Yeah. But I'm not getting zero stress. Mm. I'm not doing any job where it's like I got to think or do it. It's like yeah. that's what I'm gonna do. Do you think that's because as law enforcement? Because I always say this: when I retire, I don't want to be around people. I have served people for so <laughs> long. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like. This is going to be KD time. Just leave me alone. Are yeah. you going to move out in the country and just? Well, that'll be something I have to talk to my wife about. We've talked about a lot of different things because mm-hmm. uh, we've always been in the DFW Metroplex. Yeah. But there's so many people here now. It is so packed. Every city. Mm-hmm. Every city is insane. Mm-hmm. And every building that's going up, some for some reason, is an apartment complex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just think about, oh, my gosh, like I want to go where there's no traffic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my mom lives out in the country, and she's got almost 35 acres where mm-hmm. she's at. And it's like an hour and a half away from here. Oh, no. Tell mama she's going to have a, <laughs> a new, new neighbors. Like, who is this? Dang, girl? that's awesome. Yeah. So it's like you go out there, and whenever you're on her front porch, you can't even see the road going to her house. Yeah. Because wow. there's, I want to say it's like maybe six or seven acres up in the front. Yeah. So you can't see the road. And then at nighttime, you can't hear anything at all. No road. Man. No cars. The, the lots that are next to her, they're each a few hundred acres each mm-hmm. and they're owned by different people mm-hmm. but it's like no one lives out there well shout out to mom because <laughs> that's 
That's yeah. pretty awesome. We're going to have a GP party out there, Bob. You <laughs> yeah. don't know it, but we coming. <laughs> yeah. From a, from a trailer park to a home on 35 acres is like, you made it. You did. Yeah, you yeah. You made it. Yeah. Bro, that, you know, that it's funny you say that. It's a good feeling. Because when my dad went through a divorce, I remember him hitting rock bottom. And it was like, uh, kids, y'all going to daddy house. And it's like a single wide trailer <laughs> to the point where when the other kids would come down the, the hallway, we'd have to turn sideways just to pass each other, like mm-hmm. go to the bathroom or the kitchen. And, you know, and like like now we sit back and we're on the, the back porch and he's sitting on, I don't know, an eight and a half and mm-hmm. a little bit of Lufkin and. I like pops, you did good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, you made it. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Boy, this is all I ever need." <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he hit me with that famous question: "Do you like being a police?" I said, "Dad, I'm about to retire in a few years. You still asking me that?" So, yeah. Well, my mom always she was always harping on me. She's like, "Oh, you got to get an education. Got to yeah. get an education." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Okay." I was like, I, well, I was a freshman in high school and I was jacking around in school mm-hmm. and I failed like two classes. And then it was like my sophomore, junior, senior year. I made A's and B's the rest of the time. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I was like, here we go. And my mom's like, you got an edu- you got to get an education. Well, I graduated high school, and my mom she had had my sister before me, so she had actually gotten she dropped out of high school before she got her uh, high school diploma. Yeah. And so I'm in college, and my mom's studying to finish up her high school. Yeah. And so she did that. She finished it, and my mom makes more money than I do. Right Man, now, and it's like she's just yeah. dope. She's just she's a hard worker. So wow. that's dope. Mm. Yeah, she it, she keeps me on my toes, always trying to make me better. My wife's the exact same way. Mm-hmm. She's always like, "Hey, um, so what are you gonna do with the kids this uh, like this coming weekend?" And mm-hmm. I start thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know, babe. Like, what do you want to do? And she goes, "No." She's like, "I'm gonna go do something for me." And you can go do something yes. with the kids. Yes. Shout like, out to wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay, babe, have fun. Enjoy yeah. your me time. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I know you just got done working four days, but mm-hmm. I've been working and having the kids for the last four days. So, mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, so I wanted to change gears. I want to talk about this because he is newly promoted. How long have you been a sergeant now? Um, I think it's September of last year. Yeah. So, yeah, after after I took the test and I got on the at where I ranked at, uh, we were short on our night's A shift. And so I immediately fell in. I was doing the acting role mm-hmm. from, like, June until September until I got officially promoted. Yeah. How many people were on the list to get promoted when you took it? Uh, four took the test and only three of us passed it. Okay. And I was number three. And so at that time, did you think – because everything is, like – you know you're you're ranked mm-hmm. yeah, and so you yeah. may go oh well the top two are gonna go mm-hmm. so was that your situation because i can't remember so my situation was for sure the top two were going okay and then it was mine was pending yeah. so mine was mm-hmm. pending i think it was either i think it was a budget decision oh okay so then then so, well, something ended up happening to where there was an opening beforehand so i didn't even have to wait for budget approval my spot immediately got slid in so yeah that I've heard and seen some of the, the situations where you, you're that third person, yeah. and the other two go, and then you're walking around going, "Hey, Sarge, are you about to retire? <laughs> are you? Are you on your way? I'm trying to get this spot. No, <laughs> and, no. You, and you, you, know. you know, you're trying to get somebody to move yeah. so you can fill in. Yeah. See, that was that was never on my mind because, like I said, whenever I came here, I wanted to make sure that, like, hey, like we know this person. He's hard worker. He mm-hmm. does what he wants. Yeah. And I know I know that there's a bad word around here called DWI. Oh, that no one is. wants to mess with. Yes, sir, it is. But before <laughs> before I came here, that was one of the things I said is I didn't do them where I was at before. Yeah. But I said I'm going to come over there, and I said I'm going to I'm going to. My goal was to lead the department at DWIs, mm. and so I did it for two years in a row. And wow. I'm, I'm still going to court on them. I was going to say, my brother, you can have them. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> lead on, my friend. Yeah, lead he on. Paid his dues. He, but yeah. that's yeah. I've always been a big dues fan. It's always yeah. I think you got to. I always look at everything like a bank. You got to put your deposits in before you make your withdrawals. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. If you get in trouble, if you haven't put in enough deposits for your supervisors or even your administration, yeah, it's like whenever it's time for you to pay up, I mean, you could lose a lot more than what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about that real quick. So laterals. I mean, we always we reach out and we we love them to come in because, like you said, ten weeks in the academy mm-hmm. is nothing. Eight weeks in the academy mm-hmm. is what I had to spend over there. 
But please keep in mind, do not come over here and tell me how great your previous department mm-hmm. was because if it was so freaking great, you would have stayed there. Yep. Facts. You yes. know, and so because I've heard some officers, you, you kind of look at them like, dude, why? Hey, uh, well, you know, at my previous agency, mm-hmm. we did it X, Y, Z. I don't, bro, move on. Yeah, I'll slap you in the back reference. of the head. Yeah. yeah. It's like, just, just move around. So I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. 100% agree with that. Yeah. Um, all right, so, huh, I, without names, of course, but how are you doing this discipline thing? Mm-hmm. Like, have you had any issues or when you got to, hey, let me talk to this officer, bro, uh, ma'am, you can't do it that way, right. and I can only fade the heat so long. I think, luckily, it's a it's a blessing and a curse that I've been on the same shift the whole time. Yeah. So I've been on night's day the whole time. Even after promoting, I, I was oh, okay. on night's day. Mm-hmm. So you know everybody. So I know them. So it's a blessing See, and a curse. That transition. So they know they know what I, they know how I work. They know what I expect of myself and what I would do. Yeah. So it's easy to walk up and be like, "Hey, dude, what the hell were you thinking, man? Like that? Mm-hmm. You can't do that." Yeah. And so, but it's the same thing. It's like, whenever it's time to make the withdrawal, you got to have your deposits in there. Mm-hmm. And so, even guys that I'm buddies with, it's like you have to sit there and you're like, "Dude, I can't fade this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I can't fade this at all." I love I love you as a person. You're a great guy, yeah. but I can't help you on this. Like mm. this is this is out of my hands. Like yeah. and it's it's a, like our our LT on the shift. He's very good at saying, you know, whenever you screw up, the only person you have to blame is the person in the mirror. Yeah, own it. And it's the same thing with us. Like if I make a bad decision, yeah. And I, you know, there's some stuff. Being a lateral, you know how it is. It's like you do things a certain way where you were at for so long. Mm-hmm. Even go through field training in the academy, you get done, and you're just thinking. Oh, you default to mindset of where you were at before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, so you do it that way. And then you bring it in, like you get called in and you got four sergeants and the lieutenant on the shift and they're looking at you and they're like, Hey, uh, do you remember this call? Yeah, I remember that call. Uh, okay. Um, so what were you thinking whenever and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> those are magic words that what I'm were like, you thinking? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just stare at him and I'm like, I'm thinking I did this for 11 and a half years before I came here, but obviously I screwed it up somehow. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I mean, it's like, you just got to eat it. You just got to own it and be like, yeah, hey, I screwed up. My bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's important to run with, with good character, guys yeah. and, and girls, because anybody that knows me is funny. What we're saying, just own it. That's me. You know, LT, a chief can put me in. I was right now. KD, did you ex- <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> was that wrong? Yep. Okay. Well, you know, what is my punishment? Here, I take it. Yeah. yeah. Y'all have a good day. And yeah. I'm not mad at them, yeah. Yeah. so to speak. So when you conduct yourself as an officer and then you promote, as long as you were squared away, people don't have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. Some people get upset about things, and then it's the administration here does a really good job because I've been in some of the meetings where people think that they got it worse than what they did. Yeah. And you pull them aside and you're like, dude. No, you yeah. got lucky. Yeah, mm. it could have been a lot worse. And I even tell them like, I would have given it to you worse than the chief did. Mm. Yeah, like I, sh- I based on what happened. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would have given it to you worse than the man did. Yeah. So the administration here was very. They're really behind you and they support you on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just own your stuff. Yes. Yeah. I talked to an FCA group and that was one of one of my discussions, my topics. I said, look, guys, learn how to own it mm-hmm. because. Owning it is more of a negative connotation yeah. versus, no, if you're a great DWI, own it. Mm-hmm. Go be the best guy on the shift and make others come to you for the answers. Mm-hmm. Like, own it. So, hmm, that's that's cool. Yeah. Mic drop. I have nothing. <laughs> oh, mm. All right, so do you have to implement anything new as a sergeant? So... When you are when you promote, do you just kind of come in and it's like, nope, guys, that ball is already rolling. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I just want to sit here and learn what sergeants need to do or what you would need to do in that new role. I don't think, I don't think you have to go in and, like, try to change anything. Mm-hmm. Try to prove anything. Uh, I mean. Be innovative. Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard. It, my circumstance is really weird because. I came over with a lot of experience, but at the same time, every time we did briefing and I was in an FT, I was still an FTO, mm-hmm. I was staying in the back of the room. Yeah. And they were like, oh, you're a lateral. You don't have to do that. And I was like, mm-mm. I was like, until the LT or until my FTO tells me sit down, like I was staying in the back of the room. Yeah. 
And so it was always one of those, I always wanted to earn everything and I always wanted to show like, hey, I'll, I'll eat this. Like I'll, I'll go through what it takes. And so just making sure that the newer guys, like you see them just making sure that they want to be here mm-hmm. and just being, I mean, you don't have to reinvent anything for them, but sitting back and watching them how they do things and not trying to interrupt their flow or try to micromanage or anything, but just witness like what, how they do things. And then just think of ways to, hey, you did it this way. Now that now that you're looking back on it, what's another way that you could do it? Mm. And just try, try to keep their mind going as far as like, oh, well, maybe next time I could do it this way. Or, oh, I could, you know, I shouldn't have done this. I should do that. But, uh, I mean, as far as like being a sergeant over people, it's just, you know, being there. What do you guys need? Because, mm. I mean, I'm not out here humping calls like you guys are. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, I'm the the biggest thing that I've got is if people call in and complain about something that you did. Oh, this officer cut me off. Oh, okay. Um, is there anything else? No. Okay. Right. I'm gonna call him in <laughs> right now. <laughs> Have you had that? Oh yeah. People calling. Oh, oh, this officer was speeding. Did you get a unit number? No. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thank you. I will address it openly with everybody. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, they actually come in and get in trouble. If we have citizens <laughs> right. listening, they get in trouble. So, but no, I mean it's just just being there for them and like, hey, what do you what do you need? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's gonna make it to where? Yeah, you know, and knowing what their goals are. Like, what is your goal? Like, do you want to promote? Do you want to be in this unit? Do you want to do that? Okay. Well, if you want to do that, this is how you have to you have this is how you have to earn it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Staying in tune with where they are, what they're trying to either grow to, playing to their strengths, getting them involved. Like, what do you need? Hey, I'm here for you. I like that. And That's at the same great. time, it's a, and I tell them too, hey, what do you have for me? Because mm-hmm. I, whenever I'm in plain clothes, I'm not like I am at work. It's like putting on my uniform at work. That's like literally putting on a different personality. So I get some people might think that I'm kind of because I'll get direct into the point, just like on calls, like you show up and someone talking about something that happened last week. I don't care what happened last week. You called me today. <laughs> What's going on today? <laughs> what can I help you with now? Yes. So it's the same thing, just being, but it's like being direct with officers. It can be taken either way. Mm. So just like after you talk to them, and luckily, like I said, I know most of these people, so we can have a conversation and then immediately just be like, back to basics like back to just hey what are you doing this weekend hey what are you doing later Mm. on you know um you know how's family life how's kid like like stuff like that um so i just think finding a balance is kind of the biggest thing on that Hmm. so sergeant school do do all sergeants go there i don't really know officially which sergeant school (laughs) it is like i I, I have this in my head yeah it's like everybody says oh i'm promoting oh i gotta go to sergeant school and i'm like what the hell is sergeant school i don't know i've been i've been to a couple of leadership schools but i haven't been to like an official like what that may be what they're called oh i I know that ilea puts one on yeah i'm not sure how i don't know oh is this like something optional I don't know, leadership development, maybe? No, it, it, I don't Where's, think it's optional. No, I think oh. you have to go. You have to go. You have to go. I think you have to go within a certain time frame. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm still new. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know half the people in the building, honestly. <laughs> That's why, hey, I just speak to everybody. Sir, ma'am, Hello. good morning. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Like I showed up yeah. whenever I came up the elevator, and I'm walking around, everyone's like, who the hell is that guy with the beard walking around the building? Who and I'm like, this? that was me. So I turned the corner, and he was at uh, Chief's <laughs> office, and I looked, and I was like, that's not Thomas. I don't know who the hell that is because he's got this. this. Yeah, he's got this going on, bro. What are we doing? How long you been off? I've been off a week. Whoa! You grew that, that in fast? a week. Yeah. Holy smokes! Well, the, wow. So I'm so I'm on a review board, and so we just passed it to where the policy should be coming out to where we're going to get beards. Nah, I don't no, believe that. I, I don't believe that. I feel like I would have saw the email. It would have just been blasted everywhere. Yeah, stop the uh, <laughs> uh, negative. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> no, I just screwed this out. Uh, my wife, she went on a cruise. Uh, with my mother-in-law last week, so I took off. Yeah, and I just watched the kids, and I was like, I'm not shaving. I yeah. never grow it out. Yeah. I grow it out for just a few days, and yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna let it go the whole time. Yeah. Well, it looks good. No, it? no, it doesn't. I got all this gray right uh-huh. here, and that's the thing. Some wisdom? You know, no, that's not wisdom. <laughs> that's worrying, baby. Yeah, that's yeah. been worrying. <laughs> this is a. My Did you hear him say the wife left left me with the kids, and I ain't know what go. to do? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this: while we talking about it, so. 
I get in trouble when when I'm with the kids. Like we eat corn dogs and like <laughs> stuff that don't go together. It's like corn dogs and fruit cups. <laughs> Am I the only dad doing that, or you kind of like yeah, y'all can eat what you want? Um, no, nah, I mean we kind of stick to the same thing. My kid, my daughter loves mac and cheese. Yeah, mm. if it if she could eat mac and cheese three times a day. Oh, that's my daughter. Does yeah, it's something what? about mac and cheese. Yeah. That's my daughter loves mac yeah. and cheese. I'm like, hey, uh, hey, we're gonna do hot dogs. Are we gonna have mac and cheese with it? <laughs> No, disgusting, but I like no. it. No, we're gonna do chicken nuggets. Oh, okay, can we get mac and, and cheese, cheese with it? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna. Huh. <laughs> but I mean, they're they're pretty good. They'll eat they'll eat pretty much everything we make. Yeah, but I can't get mine to eat freaking green vegetables for nothing. Oh. You know, okay, broccoli. Oh, green oh, beans. I oh. love broccoli. Yeah. What? I mean, you may have to, I don't know, dress it up, make it fun. Make it fun? I'm going to stand there with a belt. It's going to be, I'm going to make it <laughs> You know torture. what we started doing? We started doing, like, just letting them put their own seasoning on the vegetables. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, huh. it worked. Yeah. And now they get excited because they know they get to actually hold the seasoning. Yeah. And yeah. then they we'll, eat Yeah. It. We'll have it to where they cook it. Like, they'll help make they it. They participate. Yeah. And then it's like, afterwards, my I say this every time I make something at the house, I'll tell my wife, oh, is it the best thing in the world because I made it? Mm-hmm. And now my daughter does that. She'll be, she'll, oh, Dad, is that the best? Uh, what do we have last night? We had green beans with bacon. Yeah. So my daughter's sitting there stirring the bacon in the pan. And then afterwards, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> so then afterwards, uh, took a bite. And I was like, man, this is good. Oh, is it the best because I made it, Dad? Absolutely. You're 100% right. But yeah, just getting them in the process, mm-hmm. having them involved, I think is kind of what changes it up. So mm-hmm. we're we're doing the old air fryer thing now. Oh, I, I love I the air fryer. I can't fryer. live without it. I'm telling you. I don't I like cleaning love it. The air fryer. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> right. You get used to it though. Once you get that rhythm going, it's like okay. Uh, clean, or you know? just do the thing, throw the fall in there <laughs> and then cook whatever it is. Just and take the fall out and throw it. <laughs> put rinse it, back it around. Like, yeah. I rinse it out a little oh, bit with some water. Yeah, that's what the rinse fall is for. Like the cast iron skillet. You never actually clean it. You just wipe it out. There yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. called seasoning. Yeah, seasoning. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, mama, that's called nasty. You just, <laughs> we eat stuff that was cooked on that three days ago. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, I remember it, it's always weird because my kids will complain about stuff that we eat. And I just remember, man, we'd be living in the trailer park. And my mom would literally just make a pot of like steamed carrot or steamed cabbage mm-hmm. with like chopped up ham in it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like hey what's for dinner cabbage mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah i mean we would eat that for days straight that's it yeah <laughs> one big pot my mom would make we would have beans it'd be like, what would, oh be, okay beans and mm-hmm. cornbread oh that's like the whole week yeah oh let's do it yep. okay so yep, kids nowadays peas. they don't understand struggling yeah. no they you don't know, i'm like man we were so poor Beans and rice, and to this day, we can go anywhere. If you ask me, Katie, you want beans and rice? No. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. We used to have mama make a big old pot, and it lasts four days. Mm-hmm. That was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, yeah. see, that's us. New Year's, we'll do the black eyed peas with ham in it, like oh, a smoked yeah. ham, mm-hmm. and we'll do that, and we'll still do that. Mm-hmm. And my, my wife now, she'll make cabbage. Yeah. And it's like, you think about it, I'm like, man, I can't believe I lived off this stuff. Mm. But at the same time, it's like you start thinking about all the good times you had while you were eating it, unless you eat it like every day. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. During Thanksgiving, I'm okay with having dressing, not stuffing, dressing. Yeah. I can have dressing for like the whole I don't week. know what stuffing is. You know what stuffing is. It's on top of the stove, some little bread pieces, stove top. I don't know. Anyways, See, we call like, it dressing. And dressing. Yeah, we would call it dressing. Cornbread dressing. Yeah. But we would put chicken in ours. Mm. So that way you could essentially just eat that as a whole meal. Yeah, yeah. one whole meal. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dump some gravy and some uh, cranberry sauce yes. on it. Yes. Come on, cranberry he, sauce. I, he's country. He is. <laughs> he have he is. Black in I don't know. <laughs> oh, you, bro, you over here yeah, speaking my language. Yeah, I'm so glad you didn't say stuffing. Cause, yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, it was always called dressing and giblet gravy. Do you mm-hmm. Yes, giblet yeah. gravy. My grandmother still makes that. Oh, See, man, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, we're going to. Okay, because then <laughs> once they relocate on these acres, we need to plan something. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, but uh, my grandmother, she would, she'll make that, and then we'll drive down to Houston, and there's one spot she goes to. It's an oyster bar, mm-hmm. and we just sit there, and we just shuck oysters and eat raw oysters, Yeah, and that's just it. And we'll be there, and she'll tell me the same story every year, and it, get, it gets better every year, but she'll tell me about my great <laughs> – she'll tell me about <laughs> my, my great-grandfather. They lived in Louisiana, mm-hmm. and he would go to the, to the market the, uh, in the morning mm-hmm. whenever he got paid, and he'd get a bag of oysters. And he'd go sit in his front yard, and he'd just sit there and shuck oysters and eat oysters while he was just sitting in the front yard. 
was like, man, that's the hard life right there. <laughs> yeah. The hot sauce? Do you do hot sauce? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. do it. My cousin. Yeah, let's do an ancestry DNA test. My cousin. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I guarantee you from Lufkin, bro. You, you just don't <laughs> even know it. That's awesome. So do the kiddos eat oysters? Uh, they'll try. They've tried them a couple of times, yeah. but they're still at that weird age to where they'll try them if they see me eating it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll try, but, like, my kids will eat steak, yeah. and it's like we eat our steaks, like, medium rare, mm-hmm. and they got no problem with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my son, he'll eat sushi. He loves. <laughs> See, I'm the only one in our household that loves sushi. Mm-hmm. My husband does not, and since he does not, then our children are like, it's gross. But it's really not. I don't know. I don't know how to win them over on sushi. See, but but there's sushi. fried sushi. Right? There is. Yeah. 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 Fried, fried. Like a tempura type. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just fried, and I'm good. I eat with. You. But like, I met my That's wife, and the only thing she would eat would be like steaks and hamburgers. <laughs> and whenever I met her, it was the steaks were well done. Oh. No, and so, no. so. I would go to her house and her dad, he'd grill on the weekends and he'd be like, how do you want your steak? And I'd be like, uh, medium rare. And he was like, I'm not cooking a medium rare steak, but it's like the more I came over and the longer that we were dating, it was my steak would get a little bit more pink every time. (laughs) And so, uh, but now my wife, she eats steak the exact same way that I do. And so my kids will eat it that way. And I got it to where she would. Like, we would go eat sushi, like, before we had kids, and we had money in the world, like, all over the world, and I was doing a courtesy officer gig, and rent was, like, $100 a month, mm-hmm. and I don't... Talk c- about it. Courtesy officers now are still spending, like, $1,000 a month on rent. Mm. Oh, yeah. I was a courtesy officer, and I was spending $1,400 oh my gosh. a month. I, the most I ever spent on rent as a courtesy officer was 130 Man. And that was for a gated community. Oh, bro, we still be there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we still be there. Oh, we were going to be living. <laughs> We were there for five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Saved zero money. Man. Okay, we'll talk off air how uh, Miss okay. Thomas saved zero dollars. Okay. Oh, no, no. That oh, was, th- that was th- no kids. It was every day I was off. Hey, where are we going? Yeah. We're going to South Lake. Yeah. We're going to Main Street and Grapevine. Yeah. We're going, we'd go on like three vacations a year. Yeah. We were going to, okay. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. We were going on a cruise every year. Uh, we'd go to Europe. We'd go to yeah. Chicago. We'd go to Boston. We'd go to California. Man. It was just wheeling and dealing. Hey, uh, we Whoa, living it up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, what am I doing in life? <laughs> yeah. Like, what did you were being responsible? <laughs> well, I didn't have my kids until I was 30, so mm. it was okay. Waited, a, waited a while. Hell yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. okay to wait though. You can enjoy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. what the mofo say? Enjoy each other yes, first before you start having yes. kids. Well, my husband, I waited four and a half years. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I was. I tell people now they get married. I'm like, think of one trip that you want to go on. And make sure you do that trip before you have kids. I love that. Because if not, you're not going on that trip for a no. while. Yeah. Because you're not again. you're not going to feel comfortable with it. Mm-mm. No, yeah. it's it turns into work. Although I do know someone personally, they went to Hawaii and had a great time. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. For me, my husband's like, that's work though. Mm-hmm. Like you have to all the all their stuff, the little you things, worry about, yeah. potty. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's not fun. Even driving to Galveston with newborns, because we've we've always taken our kids to at least Galveston. Yeah, I know it's muddy water and the oh. beach isn't super nice. Oh. <laughs> I was about to pull a Charles <laughs> Barkley, that old dirty. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's from Houston, so we always talk about Galveston all the time. Yeah. But it, but I mean, growing up, whenever we were poor, like that's where we would go. We would go yeah, to Galveston, and yeah. we would get ten family members, and we would stay in a two bedroom <laughs> condo. He is speaking about <laughs> life right now. This is so funny. Go ahead, bro. So I'm we listening. would so we would go there, and we would go to Galveston, and it was like. Whenever you're a kid, man, it's the greatest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's like, we're just going to hang down. We're going to eat sandwiches on the beach. Sandwich. <laughs> oh, he says sandwiches. <laughs> so we would do that. And uh, so we still take – now it's a little bit different because we don't stay up on the main boardwalk. Like we get down yeah. like just where the private houses are. Mm. But my kids have been going there since they were newborns. Mm. Yeah. And I just remember loading up the car with all that crap and the Ugh. pack and play and the yeah. strollers. Yes. And then toys that they never touch. Toys you never even get out of the car. No. Mm-hmm. And just all the work. And I just remember like – you and the wife just arguing all the way down there. <laughs> and you're like, by the time you get to Galveston, you're like, man, I'm so glad we, did, we didn't get divorced in Waco before we got here because mm-hmm. it's stressful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's funny. I was just looking through my phone and I saw a picture of my dad holding it. The, remember the shoulder VCR recorder? Oh, that, yeah, that big one. We were in Galveston thing. and then you can see that. I think you sit on it like four people can sit down and pedal. Yeah, the, the little, little pedal bike. Oh, yeah, little yeah, pedal yeah. bikes. Yeah. yeah. I was just looking at that like yesterday. It was so funny. Uh, so, yeah, you speak in my language. 
Damn Galveston. What Charles Barkley say? Oh, dirty. It's dirty. <laughs> it is dirty. It is dirty. They it, oh, tested that water. Oh, it's terrible. And they revealed the results on the news. Yeah, it's and, terrible. I will say that if you go, not up, like everyone always goes to like the main strip area mm-hmm. yeah. up by like the pier and all that. Yeah. That's, that's too busy. Yeah. But if you go southwest along all the way down, I mean, the the beach, the sand actually gets a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it's just it's so it's so much less crowded the farther south you go, and yeah. by downtown. But I mean, even downtown Galveston is pretty nice right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot more restaurants, a lot more shops, and stuff like that. So it's pretty good stuff to do, yeah. at least for a little getaway. I was gonna say I may I may have to scoot down there. Scoot on down. Yeah. Scoot. You got to scooch scooch on down. Yeah, scooch, scooch on down. <laughs> R- scooch reach on around down. there and grab reach that. Around. Hmm. Okay. Oh, man. See, we can talk all day. Yeah. Country. Yeah. I'm feeling the country vibes. Uh, all right, Thomas, before we get out of here, so we always ask anybody in the hot seat, what is one thing or one piece of advice you would give either to a lateral or a new officer or, in your case, like a new sergeant? What mm. What advice would you give somebody? As far as like an officer or sure. – um, I would say if you don't have – if you don't have your personal life in order, mm. going somewhere different is not going to be – ideal because you have it to where whether we have new incoming officers or whether you have laterals if you don't have things squared away at home of saying like hey here's the possibility of how things can be as far as bad it's going to it it creates a lot more turmoil at home Mm -hmm. and it could make it to where yeah you come over here you get nicer stuff you get more money uh for some people you get a better schedule Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, if you don't have that squared away in those conversations up front, it can cause you a lot of heartache in the back end. It's real. Yep, I agree. And so make sure you're having those conversations. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, and just to throw this out uh, out there, do the ride-alongs. Like, I tell so many people, because they go, oh, how much do you get paid? Bro, if you're worried about money, you can come over here and make a lot of money and be miserable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it may not even work out for Mm -hmm. you if you're lazy. Yeah. So... I'm, I tell these officers, go do the ride-along. I think most cities, if not all of them, offer a ride-along. But just go in and ask questions. Sit beside an officer and, at, and ask a bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully they're honest with you so that you can make a decision. Hey, yeah, I like this department or I like this city and how they do things. Yeah, money is definitely not yeah. – even coming here, money was not like a decision point for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It was mainly just like, hey, this is the opportunity. This is the – I mean – because where I worked at was like 20 minutes away from here. Yeah. So it's like the reputation of the city, the reputation of the department, the freedom to be able to do stuff. Uh, and even while I was in the process here, there was stuff in my IA file that came and they were like, they wrote you up for this? Chasing stolen vehicles, violating pursuit policy for going too fast. And it was like, they, they literally brought that up in my interview and everyone on my panel started laughing. Well, everyone except, everyone except Hannigan. He's, he's a different animal though. So. Yeah. yeah. That's but, yeah, funny. I mean, money's not a decision point because mm-hmm. I, mean, I got hired on. And I, my first job, I was making, like, $49,000 a year. And it's like I lived fine then yeah. and live mm-hmm. fine later. I mean, it's just how you, you just got to live within your means. So yeah. Yeah. definitely don't let money be the, the driving point to, to go somewhere else. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. I like it. All right. Well, Thomas, I appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. And uh, until next time. Until next time. We'll see y'all.